such a good day today, folks. Hey, we got all kinds of good shit happening. Merry Christmas! The Seattle Seahawks, your your Seattle Seahawks are currently eight and seven. They get their eighth win by beating the Tennessee Titans 20 to 17. And Geno Smith will bear you no drama by leading the team to a last minute game scoring drive to win the game to Mr. Colby Parkinson. And, and yes, that is his last name, Mr. Parkinson. Congratulations. You just won your team a very, very important game. Now, Geno Smith, amazing game. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. 227 yards, 25 of 36 with two touchdowns. And the beautiful, beautiful thing that Geno does is the zero interceptions category. Does get sacked three times, which is it sucks because you know he can get hurt. This is the issue with Geno Smith. He has an unfortunate ability to get injured quite often. Therefore, I would just really, really love and need this offensive line to keep him up a little bit more consistently. And I just want to throw this already out. My heart literally sank into the pit of my stomach when I saw Jackson Smith and Jigbo on the ground in the back of the end zone, the corner left, holding his knee. Um, you know, of, co of course, this is football. So the first thing came to my head was he's done ACL. That's it. So happy to see him back out there making some big, big plays for the team. Now, I would say as a total for this uh, win for the Seattle Seahawks, it was absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Start to finish. The Tennessee Titans, this is a tough team, especially a, a tough team to beat at home uh, with Derrick Henry and, and Tajay Spears and the way Ryan Tannehill was running the ball. He had a 23-yard scamper. They were playing a type of game to where you have a minimum amount of possessions. That's just what the Titans do. They run, they run, they run, and they bleed the clock out. Absolutely bleed it to where it's like every possession that the Seahawks had was vitally important vitally important and and to help that Kenneth Walker like you're the way you aggressively run I know you don't always get the best lanes and I know your offensive line is struggling but boy oh boy when you get going the patience that you show behind the line of scrimmage it's unparalleled your ability to torque your hips to find a different lane or a different gap it's absolutely astronomical and the fact that your ability to make sure that it's going to take not one, not two, but a few of these defenders to bring you down. That's that's the that's the sauce. And so Kenneth Walker, please remain healthy. Please stay healthy. I know there's a lot of fantasy guys out there that are really banking on you right now. And and so in that regard, Kenneth Walker, you're amazing. Got to talk about a guy though. This dude has been all over the social media realms, right? He's all over Twitter in the in the eye of. He, 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 he hasn't been starting. He has not been starting in Tyreek Woolen. He did drop a ball that could have resulted in a pick six, which we hate. But I want to know from you guys. You know, I can make my assumptions. I, I can go to some sports center guy and he can make his assumptions on Tyreek Woolen. But no one's going to know more than the Seattle Seahawks fan base. I need to know with Tariq Woolen, where are you guys out with him? You know, this time last year, he was hitting the sound waves of being one of the more dominant corners in the National Football League. I mean, a guy in which everybody wanted to compare their next generational prototype corner was to be a Tariq Woolen cutout. But it seems as if things aren't as what they seemed. Um, and so I need you guys, please, in the comment section, let me know of your analyses on Tariq Woolen. Is, is he a guy that, yeah, he deserves to be on the bench? Is he a guy that you can you know, trust him once again. Let, let me know in the comments. I want to know from you guys. Overall, beautiful win. Bobby Wagner, 11 total tackles. He got a sack. He got a tackle for loss. He got a quarterback hit. Boy, is he just the most vital piece that you guys were able to bring back into the building. I'm sure from his leadership. I'm sure from his ability to uh, uh, gain attention from the young cats in the, in the room both offensively and defensively and I'm, I'm more than sure he brings a calmness into all of the defensive coordinating personnel you know the coaching staff I'm sure he brings a calmness I'm sure he's able to speak and talk in a way where the defensive players can get it but I have a guy that I really 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 need to talk about the one thing that I truly truly love about this game of football is growth 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 pause but the ability to actually 
have a a second round draft pick out of Minnesota by the name of Boye Mafe have a pretty okay rookie season did nothing really spectacular in the idea of he wasn't really the game changer last year but boy this year oh my gosh what can you say he's already he has nine sacks on the season he had two sacks this last game against the Tennessee Titans but that's not it you know it's not about sex and that's the thing that people really miss like unfortunately they miss it's about disruption so he had six total tackles two sacks two tackles for loss and four quarterback hits that's going to turn into interceptions that's going to turn into false lead penalties by offensive tackles that's going to turn into Ryan Tannehill trying to take off running instead of staying in the pocket all those things are created with boy pack and i just love what this defense is really turning into and i and i just believe that bobby wagner boye mafe and you get some veterans in the building of course like a devin bush or a leonard williams that you got from the giants you bring in these pieces and things things work things get easier for your secondary things get easier for Quandre Diggs and easier for Reek Woolen. So, so in that regard, I just really love the maturation of this team. And you see the development really, really coming in large. Like I said, with players like Boye Mafe. Now, you guys got the Steelers coming up. And you guys know me. I'm a Bengals fan. Uh, last Saturday was not great. It was not a good time for me. It, it was emotional. I'm glad it was, you know, Christmas time. So I had a lot of family and friends, a lot of beautiful people around me that were able to sit to distract me from reality, which is also, you know, a great thing in that regard. Merry Christmas to all of you also. Happy holidays. I, I personally believe, and, and I'm biased, right? This is this is me putting my hands up and saying, hey, I'm biased. The Steelers, it it's, I hate it, but they just had a really good game and the Bengals did it. I, I just, I, that's how I see it. You know, they're going to be start propping up Mason Rudolph to be a guy that he's not. We already know this. There's no, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. We know who Mason Rudolph is. Um, you guys better be ready for George Pickens. You better be ready for George Pickens, guys. So whether it's uh, Tariq Woolen, Trey Brown, Kobe Bryant, uh, James Harden, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, I see you guys. You guys have a Kobe Bryant on your team and a Michael Jackson on your team. I don't know what's happening in the scouting department. I love it. Absolutely love it, though. Um, but, you know, I got to say this. You guys have got to get in his ear. George Pickens. And I hate to make the comparison, but he has that same mentality as a DK Metcalf. You know, you guys know he, he's erratically emotional. He can really get off his own game, get in his own way. He can get into his own mind. He gets into his pocket. So I know, I know that Seattle Seahawks defense is going to be yammering in his ear to get him off his game. That's going to be the most important thing. But most importantly, boy, hey, Ma, you better be ready to tee up, boy. Tee up. All of y'all better ready to tee up on this offensive line. I don't believe they're good. I believe they're all frauds. I, I don't believe in this Pittsburgh Steelers regime. Defensively, they're it. Defensively, that's a Super Bowl defense that Geno Smith is going to have to go up against. So that's why I'm not really hinting on you guys having it easy offensively. It's going to be very, very, very hard. DK, you got to be on your A game. You got to stay focused. Don't get overly emotional and cost your team the game. All right. Kenneth Walker, patience, patience, patience. They like to overrun but they're really good at getting to where they got to go, all right? And that's, you know, and, and guys, TJ Watt, he's going to get his. Just don't make a bad play a terrible play. Don't make a terrible play the worst play. Gino, hold on to the ball. TJ Watt's coming after you. It's just, it's, it's going to happen, all right? It's going to happen. Alex Highsmith, too. This defense is lethal. This defense is legit. If you guys can hold your own defensively, I believe you guys have the better offense, at least for sure the better quarterback the more stable situation. Therefore, I just think you guys run the ball down their throats as best as possible and hopefully away from Mr. TJ Watt. And you just hit him with the big plays. Keep using your big tight ends like Parkinson on these smaller defensive backs. Keep doing that. Kenneth Walker, be ready for a 30, dang near 30 carry game. And Gino, just manage the team. Get Jackson Smith and Jigba in space. Keep hitting Tyler Lockett on those beautiful out routes and get DK going. I love that hurdle that DK had also in that Titans game. Guys, please do not forget about the Tariq Woolen update. I need it. Please like, comment, and subscribe.